What's up guys, Clayton from Team Reaper TCG and I am coming to you with a deck profile today. Um, I normally don't do a lot of deck profiles, but I've gotten a lot of requests for this. Um, so I played this weekend, I played a Selgor Stoutland, which most people know as Bark and Cover. Um, I was originally going to play this in Portland last year. Uh, it got shelved after I had some things happen. I was not able to make it to Portland. This is a list that I worked on with uh, Tom Philby, mostly is the uh, mastermind behind the list, um, with, with me working on it, plus uh, Scott Creech, and then also Evan Malone doing some, uh, some key testing with us. Um, but yeah, so Aselgore Stoutland. Um, you know, Aselgore has a uh, deck and cover. And then, which, you know, is paralysis, poison, and 50 damage. And then your opponent cannot play supporters. So that's the main part of the deck. But let's go through the rest of the deck here so we can uh, show you everything that's involved. All right, so I'm going to try to get through this as quick as I can. There are 25 Pokemon in this list, which is pretty nuts. So we start with a 3-3 Aselgor line. Uh, Shelmet is your basic and you always want to at least try to start with one of those, even if you uh, put it up in the active and, and yawn to be able to put your opponent to sleep. Um, Selgor, of course, is your main attacker. It has the attack deck and cover, which uh, is a double colorless energy. Um, it has hammer in for 20, but we don't play grass. Uh, we only just play double colorless. So uh, deck and cover for 50. The defending Pokemon is now paralyzed and poisoned, and then you shuffle all cards attached to this back into your deck. This is very key, especially in Expanded, where there's a lot of uh, cards to get rid of special energies. Um, they cannot get rid of special energy because it goes back into your deck. So uh, that is actually pretty amazing. Um, also, the Paralysis is kind of the main uh, part of that. Um, so the Stoutland line, so you're going to play three Lillipup. A lot of people say that's the wrong Lillipup. I don't think the Lillipup really matters that much. You're not going to do anything. Uh, the f and it's also 60 HP. Uh, two Herdier. Now, these are from Sun and Moon. These are amazing. They have the ability Treasure Hunt that when you evolve from uh, your hand to from the Lillipup, you can search your deck. I mean, I'm sorry. You search your discard for an item and then put it in your hand from your discard. So you get back Verse Seekers. You can get back Level Balls, Ultra Balls. There's all kinds of stuff, um, especially the Dowsing Machine. Um, it's fantastic to get back. So Treasure Hunt is great. And then there's three, Stoutland. And um, so the ability uh, is, is as long as this Pokemon is your active Pokemon, then your opponent cannot play supporters. So this is, of course, key because after you use deck and cover, this goes into your deck, gets shuffled back in. You have to promote a Pokemon. And then you promote the Stoutland, so they're paralyzed, they're poisoned, and then now they cannot play supporters. So that is the main part of the deck. Now, we're playing a 2-2 Zorark line. Um, I'm using the Paralyzing Gaze Arua. Um, again, I don't think it makes a difference. I've never had to use the uh, Paralyzing Gaze, so it doesn't really make that big of a difference with Zorua. Um... And then, of course, the trade Zork is absolutely fantastic because you really want to try to uh, mill through your deck as fast as you can, get set up, and then the whole goal is to basically have a zero card uh, deck, and then you deck and cover, and then put your your Shelmet, your Aselgore, and DCE back in the deck. And then you, in your hand, you should have another Shelmet, another Aselgore, another DCE because you're going to trade to get into it after you draw. So when you draw, there's one, you trade, there's two more, so that's your three cards. And then it's basically just a lock um, that they cannot get out of, but it really helps to have uh, the Zorark to be able to trade to do that. The other key part of the deck here is this uh, Dusknor. So I'm playing two of the Duskwool. These are also, um, I think these are Burning Shadows. Um, this does not make a difference. So uh, it doesn't matter which Duskwools. I like these because uh, I like the art, but also 60 HP. Um, the Dust Snore, though, uh, says Sinister Hand. Uh, the ability, as often as you like during your turn, uh, you can move one damage counter from one of your opponent's Pokemon to another. So basically what you're doing is you're going to use a Selgor and then put up Stoutland. 
but you're going to have damage, and so you don't want the active Pokemon to get knocked out. Because if he gets knocked out, then they can promote a Pokemon that has energy on it, and then they can attack. You want to keep them under paralysis the entire game. That's the whole point of the lock. This is the key to doing that. You move the damage from the active Pokemon to any of the bench Pokemon, take knockouts, whatever you need to do, and then the active Pokemon stays paralyzed and poisoned until their turn is over. They can't do anything. They can't play supporters. So like I said, unless they have a switch or an escape rope or something like that, there's nothing they can do about it. So um, this is key. You know, you don't really have to try to get this up until late. You, you don't want to get it too early uh, to get it knocked out before you can get the lock in. So this is one of the things you want to try to get late. Uh, we're also playing two copies of Tapu Lele GX, of course, for the Wonder Tag ability. Um, also, Energy Drive can come in pretty key at times. Um, I have used it, but uh, it's mostly for Wonder Tag to be able to grab uh, the supporter you need. Um, we, we play a few supporters that are definitely key. Sycamore being one of them, just to kind of dump your hand. Like I said, you really want to try to mill through this deck as quick as you can to set up the lock. Uh, one copy of Execute, of course, with Propagation, so you can trade for free. Uh, a lot of times, though, you don't want to trade for free. You just kind of trade rare candies if you don't need them. Uh, Ultra Balls, once you get the lock and stuff to be able to get everything out of your hand and out of your deck. Uh, but early on, the Execute is fantastic, especially for Ultra Balls and to be able to use, uh, you know, so basically you're using just one for an Ultra Ball, one for Dowsing Machine. So yeah, Propagation Egg is great. And then... Um, also, so we play the Mew EX. Um, it's got the, uh, 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 the ability to be able to use the attacks of any of your, uh, Pokemon. So you're able to use deck and cover with this. And you're also able to, um, use riotous beating if you need to from, uh, Zorark. Uh, so, um, Mew is fantastic. Um. That way you've always got an Acelgore if you can get the Mew, and then you don't have to worry about it. So, yeah, so that's all the Pokemon. Uh, like I said, there's 25 of them, and that is a lot of Pokemon. We'll go ahead and get to the supporters now. Play one copy of Guzma. It doesn't really come in handy too often, but it's always nice to have just in case. Uh, one copy of Gladian, because there are definitely going to be stuff that is detrimental um, if they are prized. Dusknor, especially being one of them. Or maybe, uh, you know, if you prize two Stoutland, um, you need to get one out. So Gladian is definitely a must in here. Uh, two copies of Professor Sycamore. Of course, discard your hand and draw seven. You want to try to mill through your deck as fast as possible. And no better way to do it than Sycamore. Uh, two copies of N. Uh, do not play Cynthia in this list. Um, I think that Cynthia is good for other things, but with N, um, it's always good because you're you're going to be behind most of the game, um, and you can literally let them get down to one prize and then get the lock and then come back. But N is fantastic in this deck because you're going to be at five and six prizes for a while. Um, it takes a while before you start taking knockouts. So uh, they're going to have the early lead so you can end them down and you can still get yourself five or six while you're giving them one or two cards. So two copies of N. Um, two copies of Bridget. You definitely want to get this turn one if you can, even if you have to lay lay for it because you want to start getting out your Lillipups and your Shelmets and just start setting up to be able to, to get the lock as quick as possible. So Bridget is definitely fantastic. And then the last supporter is three copies of Colrus. Uh, Colrus and Expanded I think is completely uh, amazing. You especially for this deck because you are going to have five Pokemon um, almost all the time. Um, unless you run into somebody playing Parallel City which is pretty bad for this deck. You definitely don't want Parallel. Um, but yeah, Colrus is going to get you at least five plus whatever their bench has. Most of the time, I've been colorsing for eight and nine. So yeah, that's uh, so that's all the supporters right there. Let's get these out of the way. All right, so a few one of items. Dowsing machine, probably the most important uh, of the one ofs. Um, 
especially if you can propagate egg but yeah you discard two cards from your hand and then put a trainer card from your discard pile into your hand uh, this is fantastic to be able to get stuff back like rare candies or just anything else you need a level ball or maybe an ultra ball um, to get something uh, so yeah that's a uh, dowsing machine is i like it better than computer search um, only one copy of level ball level ball search your deck for a pokemon with 90 hp or less so this is fantastic because you can get a Selgor, you can get Herdiers, and you can get, of course, any of your uh, other basic Pokemon aside from the EXs and GXs. But yeah, this is absolutely fantastic, especially when you can use a Herdier. Um, you, you level ball for a Herdier and then use the Herdier's Treasure Hunt ability to get the level ball back to get something else. Um, it's It's pretty good to have, so... Uh, one copy of Countercatcher. You don't have to use it very often, but if for some reason you don't have the lock, um, this will hopefully slow your opponent down by just pulling something up that they maybe they can't retreat. Um, or you want to pull something up with a big HP because if it does more than, uh, you know, if it's, if it's 70 HP or lower, then it's actually going to get knocked out coming back. So, like I said, you don't want it to get knocked out. You you want to make sure that your opponent's active Pokemon at least has 70 or more HP. Uh, so, that's good for that. Uh, one copy of Field Blower. Um, I would love to run two. I just do not have the room for it. Um, it kind of helps with Garb. Garb is a horrible matchup, obviously, because of Stoutland. So, um, if they can play supporters, then then the lock really doesn't matter that much. Uh, one copy of Stretcher, another th card that I wish I could play two of. Most of the time, I shuffle three back, depending, because like I said, you're going to fall behind early. That's just the way this deck works. You have to set up, so you can't worry about stuff getting knocked out. Um, but you need to make sure that you can Stretcher to get what you need back. Um, or you need to make a count before, on your first d deck search, to make sure that you are, um, which Pokemon you have prized. And if you have the Gladian, um, and also if you have the Gladian for Rescue Stretcher, then you definitely do that because you definitely need this Rescue Stretcher. So that's all the one-ofs. Um, so we play three copy of Floatstone. Uh, you need to be able to get out of the active with the Stoutland. Uh, so you play three copies of Floatstone. The Floatstones, 95% of the time, only go on the Stoutland, and you definitely only want to put one down at a time because Fill Blower is a thing. You can get them back with Dowsing Machine, and you can get them back with Treasure Hunt, but it's not easy to do, especially late game, and you have to have the Floatstone on the Stoutland to be able to get out of the active. Otherwise, um, there's you know nothing you can do. You won't be able to paralyze next the next turn, so you definitely have to have those. Um, unfortunately, I'm only able to run two copies of VS Seeker. Um, that's another one that I would like to have more of. Uh, there's just not a lot of room. With 25 Pokemon, it is just impossible to get everything in here I want. Um, so only running two copies of VS Seeker. Um, obviously, we're going to run four copies of Ultra Ball, though, because you want to try to mill through your deck as quick as possible to get the lock. So um, two copies of Ultra Ball. Uh, sometimes you might want to propagate because there's stuff in your hand you want to keep, but a lot of times just get rid of stuff that you don't need, you know, supporters, especially other Pokemon, depending on what you have set up. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, four copies of Ultra Ball. And then four copies of Rare Candy. Um, we have to run this much because the, uh, Dusnor is a stage two, so we have to run Rare Candy because we do not run the stage one. Uh, evolution so um yeah so we've got four copies of rare candy also for the stoutlands to be able to rare candy up a stoutland um what you really want to do is you want to have two lillipups and then one of them you can evolve to a herdier so you're able to get stuff back uh, with treasure hunt but then the other one you just rare candy into stoutland and then we have two stadiums we're running one copy of skyfield uh, to be able to try to get our bench as big as we can and get everything set up as fast as we can. Then if the Skyfield gets knocked out or blowered or whatever, then it's fine. Then we can go ahead and get rid of the Lele, get rid of um, whatever else we don't think that we'll need. Uh, once we get the lock established, um, then we really don't need uh, two Zorks. You know, if you have two, it's great, but it doesn't really matter. So yeah, that's one copy of Skyfield. 
Um, one copy of Silent Lab. Silent Lab's pretty good. Um, I've been debating on cutting it. It didn't really come in too much handy uh, yesterday at the cup. But um, it's good in certain situations. But it is bad if you have it down and you need to use Mew. And then you can't uh, use the ability of Mew. You also can't propagate. So there are certain things with Silent Lab that I... I you know, it keeps your opponent from using Dead Nene and Shaman and Lele of their own. But um, I would probably cut this for something else. Maybe uh, another Skyfield um, or uh, maybe a, a third verse seeker. So, And then we run four copies of Double Color Synergy. And that is it. And that's all she wrote. Uh, if you guys have any questions about the deck... If you want to know anything or if you have any suggestions on things you think maybe need to go in the deck, I would be glad to hear them. Um, just uh, give us a, uh, a follow and a like and let me know what you guys think. And if you guys want me to do more deck profiles, I'll definitely do that. But uh, yeah, so Bark and Cover, Selgor Stoutland, let me know what you guys think. Thanks a lot.